Hey guys, it's Andrea Bassett here from Force Meet Academy, and today I want to talk to you about what makes your pates and terrines stick together, and that is a binder. And today we're going to talk about five different binders that can be used to help your pates and terrines have a nice texture and sticking together. And no, this kind of binder is not what you need. Okay, so let's talk about the binders that you do need. So first of all, there's the all meat method. So it seems like, oh, you don't need any binders, but actually when you make a pate or terrine with only using meat, such as for this pate that I made right here, which only has pork, beef, and lots of bacon in it. Oh, and some olives, you can see that. So for that, I didn't use any binders, but the meat has a built-in binder, which is called myosin. It's a protein, and when you work that, I use my hands, because I don't have a stand mixer with a paddle attachment, when you work the meat, it works the protein myosin, and that helps the meat stick together. Um, so that's that's one, and that's a great option for uh, making pâtés that are gluten-free if you don't like to eat gluten or you can't. All right, so that's one. Another option for binders are these things, eggs. You could use eggs, either just the egg whites or the whole thing, the egg whites and the egg yolks. And that is a nice binder right there. Now, for example, I have another pate here. Now, this um, is chicken liver pate, so the main ingredients, or the only ingredients basically are uh, chicken livers, heavy cream, a little orange juice instead of wine, and four eggs. So, and you can see why I need two terrines because I have to use this thing. Um, so it looks ugly, but it's actually pretty tasty and nice texture, like kind of a pudding, mousse type texture. So for that one, the eggs act as a nice, a nice binder for that. And again, that is uh, gluten-free. Now, sticking with the gluten-free options, you can also use uh, the binder rice or potatoes. I don't have I don't have a potato. Pretend this is a potato. This is my invisible potato. Uh, rice and potato. You don't want to use too much potato, or else it might get gummy. Um, and those are gluten-free too. Now. Going into the more glutinous options for binders, uh, you have bread, so that uh, um, is a good binder. You chop up the bread, you mix it in with milk or cream or milk, cream, and eggs, and that creates a nice uh, binder to help keep your pâtés together, and you probably need one of these external binders more so if you're making a pate that has any cooked ingredients in it before it goes in so like if you saute up um you know onions or vegetables or if you brown the meat um before putting that in you'll probably want to you'll probably have a recipe that calls for these additional binders all right and another the final this is number five i didn't even label them. I number them. Um, and the fifth option you can have here is what's called a pat a -shoe. Um So this is a concoction that's made of, let me just check here, milk, butter, salt, salt and pepper, um, eggs, and flour. And you mix that all up and it creates a great a great binder, um, and it's not just for not just for pates, but you could use it for uh, cream puffs or cheese puff puffs or dumplings or anything. 
anything like like that. Um, if you want to know how to make pat ash shoe, then for sure you'll want to turn to page 31 on this book, Pate Con Fieriette, and it's all outlined there. Alrighty. Um, and that is not good for if you don't want to eat gluten, obviously. Alright, so there you have it. Um, when you have a pate that sticks together, it's much more satisfying than having your pate sort of fall apart. And so I encourage you to uh, learn a little bit more about binders and but just also pick uh, good good recipes. And when you're making a pate that doesn't have any, you're probably going to cook it like in the pate dish in a water bath at lower heat, like 300 degrees, set up your water bath, and then you're going to take it out of the oven, let it cool, weigh it down for like a day, 24 hours, and then eat it. And uh, hopefully your pate will turn out great like these two did. One pretty, one not so pretty. All right, well, there you, there you go. That's what uh, your options are for binding in pâtés and terrines. And I hope you enjoyed this information and my show and tell. And if you did, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos, just subscribe. You know you want to. and Or you know I want you to anyway. And uh, I'd love to have you watch more videos. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!